In the Characteristics of Living Things video, you learned about what a living thing is and what qualities it has. I also mentioned that some living things are made up of just a single cell. In this video, you'll learn about different ways single-celled organisms carry out the characteristics of life. Single-celled organisms have many different ways of gaining energy. Some cells absorb energy directly into the cell body through the surface of the cell. A larger cell literally wraps its body around a smaller cell or nutrient, absorbs it into its body, and digests the nutrient directly for energy. This process is known as phagocytosis. You can observe this process in images 1 and 2. Other single-celled organisms contain special structures called chloroplasts, which can absorb energy directly from the sun and use it to make chemical food energy. In image 3, you can see a blown-up example of a chloroplast, as well as where it can be found inside a plant cell. Image 4 is Mr. Chloroplast. Note that while he appears happy, chloroplasts are simply cellular structures and do not have the capacity for emotion. Single-celled organisms do respond to and interact with their environment. Although cells are small, they are aware of their environment. Whether they are detecting food or avoiding danger, cells can respond. Many cells even have methods of motion. In image one, you can see cells use a flagellum to move. Flagella are whip-like tails that a cell moves back and forth to swim. In image two, you can see cilia. These are tiny little hairs that surround a cell. They wiggle back and forth to help a single-celled organism move. A final example is in image three. This cell actually extends part of its body forward and drags the rest of the cell body with it. The part extending forward is called the pseudopod. While many cells may not grow much larger throughout their lives, they certainly develop and change, which fulfills characteristic three of living things. Throughout what is called the cell cycle, a cell creates new proteins, builds new internal structures, copies its DNA, and ultimately it divides to create two new cells. You can see the cell cycle here. Single-celled organisms definitely do adapt to their environment. Single-celled organisms have many ways of changing their DNA to adapt to the environment. For example, if a person takes an antibiotic to kill bacteria, which is a type of single-celled organism, the bacteria may mutate and change to resist the antibiotic to survive total extinction as a result of the antibiotic in their environment. This is why scientists are concerned about antibiotics becoming less effective at preventing disease. Bacteria are examples of single-celled organisms that can adapt to their environment. All single-celled life has adaptations that help them survive in their single-celled environments. Single-celled organisms are still living things, so they must reproduce to make new organisms with the same or similar DNA. Some cells do this through a process called binary fission. In binary fission, a single-celled organism splits down the middle to create two identical cells. You can see a microscopic example of this in figure one. Another example is budding, in which a single cell will slowly grow a second one on the outside of its body until the new daughter cell is large enough to break off and survive on its own. You can see this process in a diagram in figure two. Both of these processes enable a single cell to reproduce. While this one should be obvious, single-celled organisms are made up of a single cell, thus fulfill that characteristic of life. However, now would be a good time to also mention that there are different types of cells with unique parts. For example, eukaryotic cells are larger cells that are more complex and contain a nucleus to hold their chromosomes, as well as many other organized parts called organelles. Prokaryotic cells are cells with no nucleus. Their chromosomes form little loops that float around the cell instead. They are also smaller and much less complex, and they lack the cellular structures called organelles. Finally, cells are organized. Look at the image of this cell. Notice all the complex parts and different structures within it. Even in a single cell, there is organization. The cell contains a number of different structures called organelles. These organelles are like organs in our body. They are essential to the survival of the cell and are organized into groups for efficiency. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.